Okay, here is my demonstration of my updated Windows 8 desktop. I've added a few device devices and hardware to bring this up to make it look a bit better. I'm going to demonstrate Windows 8 with a few add-on programs using two different size monitors. I got a 19 inch on the left side and I got a 22 inch 3D monitor on the right. I'm using a RAT7 twin laser 5600 DPI mouse as well as I'm going to be using a Logitech touchpad T650. It's wireless and it's got Windows 8's features as well as it's fully customizable. <clears throat> so let's dig right into it. Um, we are first going to sign in so you either swipe up or drag up. Let me drag it back down just because I can. See? See? Throw it up. Now we're going to sign in. Now here's the start screen. The start screen, I got it acting like the desktop. What I mean by that is, the just like the desktop, you can change your wallpaper, shuffle it every 10 seconds. Not only that, I can also change the color pattern, palette as well every 10 seconds. Depending on the desktop wallpaper will depend what color my palette scheme is. As you can see, it changed to purple. change to grayish. So every 10 seconds it changes the color changes. I like that. I actually got a clock up here now. That's part of Decorate and this whole thing is part of Decorate. It's by Stardock and it's Decorate. It's $4.99. It's totally worth the price. So we're gonna go right into uh, I'm gonna actually show you Decorate here in a second. So now we're in the desktop. At the desktop you notice I got a start menu on each of my windows. This is being used by Start 8 which has a lot of good configurations. Its updated version is 1.11. It's for 4.99. It's worth buying, S buying as well, for people that need a start menu. In fact, I use the start menu on my Windows 8 gaming machine, which you're watching right now. I use it on my laptop. I also use it on my tablet because the start menu is still the quickest way to search and open features uh, programs. I do use a start start um, start screen too. I th I personally use a start screen as an application launcher not like a start menu but I mostly use it for just quick launch programs that I got pinned as well as for live information so I don't have to open up the programs to see it such as my mail, my weather and whatnot. But if I'm gonna open something on the desktop and I want to have the desktop being shown and not lose what I'm working on I'll use the start menu which is awesome to have. It's $4.99 as well. So I'm going to dig into the Decorate for a second and show you some features with the new Decorate. So here you can add your wallpaper, change your wallpaper up. You can add blur if you want to blur it. Should I say fade it first, but then it's blur. Even on the lowest blur, it looks too blurry, and when you got it really blurry, it looks like nothing. So I don't know what the feature they've got to lessen up on the blur a bit. You can add filters if you want. Contrast. Contrast is kind of cool. I actually have contrast enabled a bit. You can sort of see a difference. Kind of makes it a bit brighter. Now, this is the part I was going to talk about. You can customize your own colors and leave it as is. Do whatever you want, right? Pick a color, make it pink for all I care, right? There you go, right there, right? Or use a window standard, which I do, and then have this checked. It's called the Automatic Create a Start Screen Color Scheme for the Selected Custom Background. So anytime your background changes, your color scheme will change. As you can see, it keeps changing on me. <laughs> Right now, it wants a purple one, which is kind of cool. So it matches your desktop wallpaper. It'll match your desktop idea of changing colors. I'll say it just changed again, which also means when you this is a desktop application in full screen. It's not a Metroid application, and which also tells me that the start screen is constantly changing, even if you don't see it. This program verifies that for me. They they added an enhancement. You can now add a clock to the start screen, which is really cool. This is how the this is how I got the clock on the start screen. It's nifty to have. And then you can add wallpapers to your lock screen. 
custom wallpapers to your lock screen. And you could do it through the normal way too if you wanted to. It's up to you. It really doesn't matter. So that's how decorate works. Now I'm going to show you what I'm using for my background. I haven't bought this yet, but it's for $9.99 and it's in beta right now. And there is a massive major issue right now with this beta. If you go show desktop, you quite literally will screw up your backgrounds. And I'll just show you this right now. You go over here and you go show desktop. Which is fine. It shows you desktop. When you click on it, it crashes. It's not actually crashed. It's just glitched out. And to get it back, you just go apply again. And it brings your monitors back. That's the biggest issue it has. You can show desktop. You can move your mouse over it. But the moment you click on it, it will actually crash it. So here, you can, let's say, I go down to my mixer. Anything that says DH host is music for your background. So that's my left background. I got that permanently turned on. Say I changed it up. So talk about that. You can adjust it. Stretch over monitors. Fill monitors. Stretch effects. You can switch up effects. You can see that happening. And uh, see if I uh, unclick this. I'm gonna go no effects for now. Hmm. So that's the video wallpaper, and I'm gonna show some options in this as well. I could swing it down to best performance, and then go detect settings. Apparently, my computer likes it at the highest, so that's fine. You can add folders, desktop icons, most fully. You could do that. So that's the program I use. I used to use a program. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna launch it anyways. It's video wallpaper, and this was for 19.99, so it's kind of expensive. But I got it running over top of my desk cape. And in video wallpaper, same things. You can add folders, but video wallpaper has a few things like change mode, shuffle on. You can change the background every whatever, right? Also, you can have it'll just randomize backgrounds. That's the thing with Deskscape 8 right now. It, you just set your backgrounds and that's it. This one will actually switch it over once it's finished. But I don't use this one much anymore because it's not as stable as uh, Deskscape. I've had this one crash a few, a few more times and it's kind of a pain in the ass to get restarted. As uh, there you go. So that's my video wallpaper and the two programs. But for Deskscape Eight, which is in beta, is nine ninety nine. Start eight is four ninety nine and uh, decorate is four ninety nine. So you're looking about twenty two dollars after tax, and that's not bad for add-on programs to make it look and feel like Vista or Windows Seven. Plus, of course, a start screen add-on, which is kind of bonus. I mean, if you don't want to buy decorate, you'd even save more money. But uh, if you bought Windows eight for the fourteen ninety nine or the sixty nine ninety nine, and you wanted to have these, which is another twenty bucks, you'd be it would be way cheaper than buying a retail version of uh, Vista or the Windows 7 for that fact. So the add-on programs aren't all that expensive. So I'm going to show you my other demonstration of this I wanted to show. It's using the Logitech 
touchpad T650. It's got some nifty things, and I'm going to show them all. I'm going to start with four fingers, work down to three fingers, two fingers, one finger, and then the gestures. So the four fingers goes like this. You take an application. I'm going to actually open up two of them. Take an application. You take four fingers. You scroll up. Scroll up. That's four fingers. You want it minimized again? You minimized it. It's up, down minimized. Now if you want to take that same one, dock it to your left, which is fine. Now with normal windows, if you have a normal mouse, which I'm going to quickly go back to using, if you try to dock it to the left, you notice you can't, not with dual monitors, it, or the right, depending where your monitors are set, you can't dock it. You can only dock it like that. Now, If you have this touchpad, you can dock it left, sorry, right, pull it back out, dock it left, and now you can actually dock two of them on the same monitor. Go left again, and you can keep going. So in reality, you can have four using this touchpad. So that's the four finger gesture. Now we're going to go to three fingers. Now three fingers is used for the desktop. Three fingers up, take you to the start screen, and back to the desktop three fingers down shows you the desktop three fingers left and right I'm gonna quickly open this up four fingers up maximizes it three fingers to the left scroll back three fingers to the right scroll forwards now I'm gonna show you the two finger mark and two fingers, I'm going to open this, two fingers, you can zoom if you pinch, which I'm doing right now, or you can scroll up and down if you two fingers up and down. Now if you're at the start screen, there's a bar at the bottom, two fingers left, right, to scroll. That's the two fingers. Also, two fingers click, this is a customized feature. It doesn't come default this way. I had to set up, but two fingers click is the right menu button. So that's the two fingers. Now we got the Windows gestures. Scroll from the right. Inwards, swipe inwards, brings you the charm bar. Now if I go to the start menu, which is three fingers up, I can pinch and zoom if I go from the I'm gonna go back to there actually three uh, three fingers up again now if I uh, go from the top to the bottom of the mouse pad swipe downwards it gives me the menu bar at the bottom your right click menu bar Now if I swipe to the left inwards, if I had a program open that was, okay, it brings me up that. So I can click to desktop if I want, swipe it in. Okay. So that's how those gestures on the mouse work. Another nifty thing with this background, I'm gonna quickly go back to using the uh deskscape. If I click it here, drag it. I can actually see my background moving. It's kind of gibbled up there, but that's okay. Drag it. Whoops. Can I have that back? <laughs> okay. I need that opened again. So you can have your background moving. So you can see the background, still playing in the background. Uh, the other thing is if I want to take my background, I mean my desktop, drag, if you got two monitors you can drag it, right? Switch it over to your next desktop and now I got, the, now I got it over here. So if I go here, so now it's going to show that background. Simple, if I want to move it over here, now I got it on this side. 
Same with same with the uh, Metroid apps. If I drag it over here, it'll go from one window, one Metroid app to another. So depending where your Metroid app is or your desktop is, depends what will show up on the left side for your desktop background. So I can bring it back here, and then see I got it over there, and I won't have it over here anymore. And so that is my demonstration of Windows 8 and a few add-on programs, as well as using dual monitors. If you have more than two monitors, like three or four monitors, and you have a touchpad, the Logitech touchpad, you can actually dock more windows, which is kind of cool. So there you have it, an updated, my update demonstration of Windows 8 and the tools I use to make my desktop more functional.